Most of my high additions to Tricks and Treaty as of late have been trying to capture game feel. I'm sure if you're listening to this, you know that game feel is not slapping your controller or monitor and literally feeling the game. No, it's actually where you use visual and audio design to make your game feel more satisfying. Wait, that's what game feel is? I already have some sounds and animations and, um, and... It, it feels like a game, so, um, uh, yeah, mission, mission complete. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and microtransactions now. Hold up. Just having visuals and audio does not immediately mean that you have a game that feels good. For this video, I'm going to be explaining why the visual changes I have done add game feel. Uh, audio changes are going to be in uh, another episode when I actually have done more of them. Really quickly, for those not in the loop, Tricks and Treaty is my time management roguelite where you have to get your stolen tournament ticket back by the end of October. A whole ton of this game will be designed around this time mechanic, and I'm thinking that you might be able to make some builds that actually benefit you for beating the game, I don't know, on the Tuesday or if you procrastinate. It's been in development for about three years now, and I'm crossing my fingers I can get it done this year. Enough intro, let's talk about visual game feel. Before adding a lot of game feel, I actually had a bit of an art style change with the game. The previous art style from 2020 was pretty good, honestly. I'm still proud of myself for that. Um, but the new art style has a lot more detail on it, and I really wanted to make a lot of the colors pop. I'll probably talk more about the specific character design in future videos, again, once I have more of it done. But in terms of adding game feel, I wanted the new art style to feel a lot more bouncy. I kind of think that the older one was slow. I mean, like, if we look at the older walking animation, you can see that it works. Trix is walking, but it doesn't really feel like there's a whole ton of movement. And that's a pretty important thing, in my opinion at least, that you'd want in a platformer. This new walk cycle works really well because of two things. One... I actually used less frames on this one. I was kind of experimenting, and at first I didn't think it would work, but, I mean, you're looking at it now, and I'm personally pretty proud of it. In my opinion, the amount of frames an animation has doesn't inherently make it better or worse. I guess more frames is kind of worse, because it means you just have more work to do. But using less frames in Trix's new walk cycle made it so that the movement was a lot more bouncier, because there's no major smear from when they're at the peak of their step to the base. Because there's no big swoosh for when they actually finish taking their step, this makes it so that most of the animation is anticipation, and that makes it so that the actual idea of them taking a step is emphasized a lot more, and it feels a lot more bouncy because it's like whoosh, 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 or something like that. I don't think my voice matched up to the animation because I'm not looking at it when I'm recording, but you get the idea. The other thing that really sells this animation, though, is the clock on Trix's hat. If you look at Trix's walking cycle without the clock on their hat, they still have a pretty good amount of movement going on, but it's not nearly as expressive. And I kind of think the reason why this is the case is because the clock almost echoes Trix's movement. Like, when they start to rise up, the clock is rising up, and then when they're at the peak, it will start to go down. And it kind of adds more weight to the animation and that kind of makes it a little bit more rhythmic because you almost want to like count every single time Trix's clock goes down or when they finish taking a step because it kind of like resembles like a metronome almost. Speaking of movements with the clock, I added a lot of exaggeration to Trix's new jump animation. How I wanted to do this one was have a little bit of squash before Trick starts stretching, the original jumping animation really just only had stretching, which is alright, but I feel like having a little bit of squash at the start is what really propels the animation, because that adds anticipation, and then that makes the exaggerated movements a lot better. The last frame of Trix's new jumping animation is probably one of my favorite game feel additions that I've had. Remember how I said that the clock on Trix's hat almost echoes their movement? For this frame, I made it so it parallels their movement instead, which, by having it rise as they rise, that makes it so 
that there's a lot more emphasis on tricks actually rising. And by having that as the last frame, once players jump a few times, they kind of get a few good sense of where Trix's maximum jump height is, and that creates game feel because players are more aware of where they're actually able to jump. Just ignore how the animation looks in the sprite editor because to make the exaggeration, it kind of looks a little crusty, but in game it's fine. And players wouldn't really notice that unless I told them. I also changed Trix's attacking animation, or I guess rather I added one. Originally, Treaty was the only one who would fight. I mean, I guess for the most part, Treaty still is the main one who attacks, but what I added was a bit of exaggeration on Trix to actually make it so that there's a lot more weight when you're actually firing. This makes the attack feel a lot more powerful because there's a little bit more anticipation than previously, and I think it's just enough to the point that it doesn't feel like you're firing off like a complete just like all-out barrage attack or whatever, but it is enough to the point that it feels a lot more like bouncy, weighted, and just kind of fun to just shoot even just to see the little animation. I'm pretty proud of it, even though it's mostly just a small coding thing, but still it looks good. I did code in a few combat changes to actually add to a little bit of the movement and extra game feel. Namely, A, when you first start firing with the ink ability, Trix will actually perform a dash, as you can see. And also, too, you can pogo off of enemies. And both of these really made it so just bouncing around was a lot more fun. Again, alongside the animations that I did. And I knew I added game feel when I landed this. Sweet. <laughs> a lot of the combos felt pretty natural the instant I added a lot of these changes, and I kind of figured that having one big flashy thing at the end of the combo would just really sell it through. I'm pretty proud with how I staged these effects. Instead of having the camera zoom in, I had like a darker shade close in on the screen to make it feel a little bit more intense. Of course, there's the obligatory dashing lines, and then when you actually successfully KO the enemy, you have like the fog in the background, like a smoke machine kind of, and then you also have, of course, the sweet text, which I originally was going to have the text up on the side of the screen, but I kind of like how it's behind the enemy because otherwise, I feel like it'd be a little bit more distracting instead of like a spectacle and a focal point of where the enemy actually just got completely decimated. Ultimately, I feel like this effect is a really big cherry on top that, in my opinion, added game feel. Of course, I'm not completely done adding game feel to the game. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I still need to do some audio effects. I also have to, like, animate other bosses and stuff. Um, and this is the only ability I really revised since maybe... I don't even know how long, but overall, I have a good start for adding game feel. Anyways, thank you for watching and finishing up my devlog. Um, this was supposed to be done originally in like mid-March, and now it's mid-almost end-ish of April. Whenever this is getting uploaded, I'm not really <laughs> completely sure. Um, I kind of looked at some of my older videos, and... I think two things about them was a they're kind of focused on everything I added at a time just within the time frame and b I feel like they were not nearly as exciting or funny and I kind of tried to do that in this video by focusing on one thing just being game feel even though I've added in a bunch of other stuff and with when this video is originally supposed to be out I probably have enough stuff to make another video maybe I don't know but um yeah, ideally I kind of wanted this video to be focused on one topic and to be a little bit more funnier. And I think I did a pretty good job at it. But then again, I'm just laughing at my own jokes, so I don't know. But um, yeah, thank you for watching the video. I uh, hope you have a good day.